the crucial state of Georgia, of course, which Joe Biden won in 2020 uh, in a sort of shocking turn of events, the site of some of the most contested, hard fought and fascinating elections of our time. Stacey Abrams, she knows. <laughs> She knows all about it. She's been working to get out the vote all across Georgia, not just in the election for a while. She's, of course, the founder of the new Georgia product project and the founder of the voter mobilization initiative, Fair Fight Action. She's the host of Crooked Media's Assembly Required podcast, and she joins me now. Good to have you on, Stacey. Thank you for having me. Um, how are things looking in Georgia to you, someone who, I, I don't know if there's a person in America who knows the, the politics of that state any better? Well, we're very excited about where we are. As of today, a third of Georgia's voters have cast their ballots. And we know that right now it's neck and neck, which means we have to keep showing up. We've got to keep voting. But we also have to remember to reach out to our friends and our families who aren't sure if not between voting for Vice President Harris and former President Trump, but whether they should vote or not. And this speech, this moment, is the reminder of why the affirmative of voting is so important because it's not simply about who you like, it's about what they will do for you. And what Kamala Harris laid out means so much in the state of Georgia, a state where we have the sandwich generation taking care of kids and of parents, where we do not have Medicaid expansion. And so health care costs mm. are so high, a state where we lost Amber Thurman and Candy Miller because of the arcane horrific and mean-spirited abortion ban that is killing women across this country, including right here in Georgia. And so this is no longer a hypothetical. This is not a contrast between two narrowly divided issues. This is a stark decision between someone who wants us to move forward and someone who only wants to exact revenge. Donald Trump does not care about Georgia. Kamala Harris does. And we need to get out and vote. And we believe we can get it done. As Vice President speaking, Amber Thurman's name today on stage, uh, paying tribute to her. Uh, a woman who passed away after seeking reproductive care denied to her by the state's legal apparatus. In terms of the early vote, let's just take a look here. And I don't want to get too into like the weeds here, but in 2020, um, you know, a huge percentage of the voters voted uh, voted early. Um, you know, the, the vast bulk of Georgia voters voted early. Of course, that was in the midst of the pandemic. And this is what we have as of now. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, I guess, is, is this today's data? Um, so enormous levels of voting happening. Is that, are those numbers right? Can those numbers be right? What, walk us through what's yes. happening <laughs> and, the, and, and, and the difference between now and 2020. So in Georgia, we have roughly seven and a half million registered voters, depending on the numbers you look at. Uh, in 2020, we had roughly five and a half, five, Five and a, you know, 5.2 million people who actually voted. And so what you're looking at is one of the highest levels of early voting. And it's for two reasons. One is that despite SB202 and Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger attempt to limit access to voting by making it harder to vote by mail, those voters who were told it's harder now to vote by mail did not give up as they were hoping. They instead have shifted to show up in person and luckily in Georgia, we have both in-person early voting and vote by mail. But let's not get confused. This is not because they've made it easier. It's because people refuse to let them take away the right to vote. In addition, what we are seeing, though, are Republicans who used to vote on Election Day because Republicans finally realized that if you tell everyone to wait, they may believe you. And so Republicans have made a concerted effort to shift voters into early yep. voting. Our mission, then, is to make certain that we outnumber them at the polls, that we not succumb to their attempts to block us. Luckily, the Georgia Supreme Court has said that they will not suborn the new terrible chaos-laden rules that the state election board that Republicans try to put in place. And we have to think about this every day, that we have the chance to once again be the state that delivers 16 electoral college votes to Kamala Harris and to a future that we all deserve. Yeah, that, 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 that was a useful explanation of, of what's going on with the early voting. One of the things that's making any kind of analysis of these early votes, apples to apples, impossible, is are those two things, right? You had the pandemic in 2020, which totally changed the landscape. And now you, you, and you had this weird polarization happening around voting method driven by Donald Trump's delusional fantasies and lies. And now you have more and more people voting early, you know, not in some ideologically sorted way, which, of course, never made any sense to, to, to begin with. Um, 
when you I want to end on that that question you were saying before you know there's been so much attention I would say the last two or four weeks of the last undecided voters people who are still making up their mind and I think you're probably right that that category has diminished to a point where it's not that statistically significant and probably a larger bucket of voters are voters that would vote but maybe something else is going to come up what do you think is the most important thing for turning folks that might vote but may not into absolute sure vote. So on, on our podcast this week on Assembly Required, we had Kavitha Sarana who wrote the story of Amber Thurman for ProPublica. And she pointed out that this election is not just about, it is absolutely about Kamala Harris, but it's also about the judges. It's about the DAs. It's about who is interpreting these horrific laws and mm -hmm. who can change the rules. The title that we've given this episode is Voting Can Save Women's Lives. And that, I think, is one of the most salient moments in her speech and in the decision making of voters across Georgia and across the country. Do you want to save the lives of half of our population? Do you want women to be first class citizens again in Georgia and around the country? Do you want to be able to take care of your family? And do you want the ability to choose what that family looks like? Those are the questions on people's minds, and that's the question that we're asking every Georgian to take into consideration and show up at the polls. The last day of early voting is November 1st. Election day is November 5th. And between now and then, go to IWillVote.com to find out where you can vote, how you can vote, and please, by God, go vote.